Hello and what's up everybody, this is Pete from Speed Academy and in this video we gonna learn about Python input and output functions. Okay, so actually guys this video is a part of our Python series and if you haven't watched any of the tutorial of my series you will find the link in the video description or you can go over the top, you will find the top or over the top right corner you will find an eye icon where you will find the same video links. Okay, so now let's start this tutorial by looking at what are Python inputs. Actually guys, why we need input functions? Uh, whenever we want to take the input from the user, we want the user to input some data, then we are required to use the input functions. Okay, we will be taking a look at that how we're going to use with these input functions in our major projects that we are going to learn about, uh, build about this completion of the Python part. But uh, let's start by looking at your Python input function. So here, I, here I'm having the by uh, my python 3 provided me the input function which is this you can see this is the input function which is provided by a python 3 this and this is the syntax but before this python 3 if i talk if i'm talking about python 2 then we are having raw input uh, previously we used this input uh, this input function but in python 3 uh, this in raw input is now converted into only input function okay both are same if you see a uh, raw input on input both are same you can use them but i think if you are working with python 3 then raw input is not supported in that so you have to use the Pyth uh, python input function only okay if you are working with the older version of python then you can use raw input or maybe some other input function may be present in, over there but if you are working with python 3 then i recommend you to use that input only okay and now I can start by taking this example and show you how it is going to work. So before this, uh, let me tell you about more about this input function. Actually guys, this is your input function, this is syntax of input. So what we have to write like input and inside of this we have to pass the prompt. Actually the prompt part is optional part. It's just, it's, it's basically a string part means you are writing a string so that you can notify the user that what this input function is going to ask. Uh, is asking from the user means what type of input we are asking from the user so that he can enter the either a name or a number just like uh, if I just write in like name and I just call my input function then uh, if I run it then I don't know that whether it's asking or not you can see that I'm getting nothing over here but actually my input function is working over here so if I write like speed over here uh, actually I couldn't see over here but uh, if I print it let me just show it to you and now if i show it to you like speed over here then you can see it's returning me this feedback actually what's happening over here guys that i'm uh, my input is not notifying the user it's not alerting the user that what type of data we are asking from the user okay so for that what we have what we can do is just simply write like input and inside of this i can just pass any message like enter your name sorry not like that enter your name and there we go and then I can print like name. Actually, guys, this print function is the output function that we are going to do in the later in this later in this video only. So just don't worry about it. You can think that this is the uh, part that we are working with. I can use like enter name so that you will get notified that what I'm talking about over here. And then I can pass the name variable. Uh, let me just make it a little bit bigger for you. Okay, fine. Let me just create this console and now if I run it again then you can see that it is now asking it is now showing me the message that it is asking for the name so I can just write it like speed over here and here I'm getting my output like enter name is speed okay so that's how our input function works and now let's just move on to the output function and how our output function is going to work actually our output function consists of many types of parameters that include in it so let me just show it to you Actually, this is the example, same example that I'm showing to you that I enter a number and then we are printing the number. So we are getting the output like enter the number and then we have to enter any number inside of it and then we are getting our output in the next line, which is the 15. So now let us to take a look at the output function of the Python. So here in Python, we use print function as a output function. If you're working with Java or something else like JavaScript. So there are some different methods like console.log or system.print.ln 
but in Python we have a simple function which is only print. Okay, you can just write like print and you can print n number of data and you can enter n number of objects inside of it. So let me show you the index of it. So here it is index. You can see that we are having like let me have zoomed it out for you and make this a little bit more bigger. Ha! Huh. Here you can see that it is the syntax of the Python output print function. We can say output function. So here I'm a here the first argument is the star object. And what actually the star means over here, actually this is an argument arbitrary object. We will learn about this argument when we are dealing with the function parts. I will show you how you can build your own print functions and a lot more exciting things using the functions of Python. Actually, Python functions are so much powerful than any other functions because it have a lot more things. Ah, so uh, what I'm talking about over here, okay, the parameters. So here you can see that first parameter is your star object. And basically, as for now, you can only understand that star means you can enter n number of values to it. Okay, so means uh, here you can see that I have, had, I have entered two values over here. Like enter name, which is equal to this. And sorry, not like her. And the name is equal to this. And I can just pass like n number of arguments over here. If I just comment this out and comma, and you, you, you have to separate the n number, your different output value by string, by comma. So I can just write it like this, or I can write it like this, comma, anything means just anything. You can write like anything over here. Okay. So if I show it to you in my output, then I'm getting the output. Oh, sorry. Aha, uh -huh. I'm getting the output over here. You can see that enter name, speed, 21 and all. So that's how it is for me to enter n number of values. Means I am passing. Actually, your print is a function. No? So if you're familiar with functions, what function does, it can take n number of arguments. Means whatever the uh, type of function you have defined, like whether our function is going to take single argument, multiple argument, keyword argument, any type, any type of arguments. So we are dealing, uh, actually I will explain you all in brief when we are dealing with functions. So I hope you don't just get messed up over here. Okay, let me just make it a little bit small so that our uh, both codes and this dot didn't interfere with each other. So now let's just take a look at the different arguments. So we are having the separate argument and the end argument over here. So I can write it like print and like hello. And if I just directly, just see guys what I mean over here. If I just directly print it, then I'm getting the output like hello world over here. I mean the same output that I'm just writing over here. And it is by default separated by space. You can see this is this space. If I just zoomed it a lot for you, then you can see we are having a space over here, the blank space. You can see this is one one word. This is second word, but in, but in between of this, we are having space. So this is the by default separator of our Python, which is, uh, by default we entered in it. You can see this is our separator, which is by default space. Actually, this is uh, here there's a gap over in, in between them. Uh, so let me just, if I just go over here, just give me a moment, guys. Fine. So now it will be a lot more. Oh, okay. So you can see that we are having a separator over here and in between of this separator, we are having space by default. So it is separating our two values by space. But if you want, you can change this separator value. Actually, this is now a keyword argument. I'm talking about the different types of argument. So this is now your keyword argument. You can just write it name and you can just pass like comma. So now my value is going to be separated by comma. So if I just print it again, you can see that previously it is printing like hello world and the uh, the separator is between this space and now my separator is changes to comma you can change it to anything like hashtag or something like this now you just change it with hashtag if I want it I can change it like this means uh, minus 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 you can see that now it's working fine so it's over you that what type of separator you want to add in your output so make your output more interactive and more visualized to the user and the next thing is your end function Actually, this is what means whenever we print, uh, this is automatically adds to the next line. Means you can see this by default parameter value having the uh, end by default our end parameter has having the value of slash n, which means a new line. Uh, you can see the change in this particular example, but 
I'm going to show you this end f function more in brief that how it's working when we are dealing with file system and all. Okay. So when we are working with files, then we are having a large amount of data. So I can easily show it to you that how our slash n and how our end argument is actually working over there. Okay. So as for now, you don't, you only have to understand that every time you print, it will going to print on new line. Okay. Okay. So every time you call a print function, it will going to print on new line. What I mean is if I just print it like, woo, and uh, let me just check this out for you one more time and, and it's equal to this. So yes, it worked. So you can see that I have now changes and to uh, slash and to space means nothing, but I have this string. So it is just now you can see that if it's now merging up together, if I want, I can just separate it by dash dash dash. Now my end is separated by dash. So you can now see that my this uh, upper string and the second stream is now working well. Okay. I was thinking that it, it wouldn't work, but it's just working over here. So it will be a good example for you to understand that well, how our end function is working over here. Means our end is basically defines uh, when the function, print function and printing the value. Then uh, after that, we have to break our line or what else we want to do with it. So in my case, I am not breaking my line. I'm just uh, pushing some uh, random stuff in it and just concatting it with a other string. Means the next, you can see I'm just uh, if I remove it from here, then if nothing gonna work, means nothing gonna happen over here. But if I just write it like this, then you can see that it seriously worked over here. So now you can easily see that what this end function is actually doing over here for you means, uh, let me just separate it back comma. So, and run it. So you can see that the first time when we firstly print this out, here it is hello world and we are separating it by end and we are, we have changed the end value from slash n to comma. So at the very end of the hello world, it put the comma and then it's put in the second line, which is the woo. And after that, by default, this print function is having the end value of slash n. So the output just after this function is going to come in the next line. So you can see just after woo, we get the output in next line which is both but if we change this to uh something like and then and you can see that it also gonna merge over there so now all my output are in the same line so it's all for you that how you're gonna work with them in that, uh, now we are left with two rest two rest of the uh, rest of two functions which are uh, uh just give me a second moment uh, moment guys let me just kill this terminal okay so now we are left with two function over here which is your file sys dot sys stdo dot out and false uh, and flush is equal to false so what this function do actually guys uh, this function is basically a part of your let me just make this out more bigger okay so actually guys this is our screen this is what our screen means the terminal window where all our output is giving this is our screen this is what stdo dot out means system dot studio out okay so what we are doing over here that we are telling our print function to uh, show our output in our terminal window which is this window but if we don't we if we want to get our output in some kind of files or if on any other screen then we can change it from here so we will be discussing that uh, it in the file part more in depth when we are dealing with the file system as for now you can just leave it but if you want you can just go through the docs means the node that I have written over here that the file object is where the value are printed and its default value is system dot actually the says it stands for system cd out stand for your screen okay uh, standard output so then last so now we are left with the flush argument of the syntax function of this print function so what is flush guys flush is nothing but flush is a parameter used to flush the internal buffer or your stream we can call it stream so we can set our flush to uh, true or false and then it will be, then it we can use it for clearing our internal buffer so now if i zoomed it for you zoomed it out for you then you can see then here we are having two main term which is your buffer and stream 
So guys, buffer is nothing but buffer is a physical memory in our in our devices in our system, which is used for storing our data temporarily. Okay, and I hope you all are guys familiar with that. Our system is consists of RAM, uh, random access memory, where we uh, where we whenever we are dealing with temporary data, then it is going to be stored in your RAM only. And when we save our file, then it will going to move from RAM to the hard disk or wherever we saved it. Okay. So if you are storing data in temporary, then we call this as buffer. Okay, the place is known as buffer. A space where our data is stored temporarily is known as buffer. Okay, so here the buffer is referred to the our RAM only. Means RAM is a physical memory where we are storing the data for you can say for temporary, and then later on we can move to the uh, data to the another physical memory which is a hard disk, and in hard disk, we know that our data is permanently saved unless or until we format it or delete it out. So I hope you guys understand what is the meaning of flush and why, how what is buffer also. So buffer and streams are both are same. So that's all for this tutorial, guys. I hope you guys understand how this all is working. And see you in the next video, guys. I hope you, if you understand this video, guys, then please leave a like and do comment to my video so that I will really get it not by that whether you get under whether you are understanding my topics or not. If you fail any doubt in my any of my topic then you can just leave a comment so that I can just uh, re explain it to you. Just comment it below. I will just try to explain the terms or the video on whichever the topic you